welcome back guys this is rob with tech bringing you another video of open media vault so in this video i got uh, a comment uh, relating to how uh, to do like an in place upgrade like from actually going from a live environment uh 6.0 to a 6.4 so in this case i have this set up already i have my docker running it's uh, running jellyfin and portainer as containers and you can see here's a 6.0.24 um, if we go into system OMV extras Docker, one thing to keep in mind is the Docker storage. Because when we upgrade, um, if anything happens, right, you need to re put this Docker storage the same. And what this is going to do is just keep your containers in intact. So if we go to the IP address of your Open Media Vault, in this case, this is mine. Uh, I'm going to port 9000 and you can see that my portainer is running uh, we go here and we go to containers and I have portainer and jellyfin so if I go into my other I do the IP address for the OMB server and then do port 8096 here's my jellyfin I'm just going to sign in real quick and you can see I have this one right here so you just this is a, a one of the, the my first video that I did for the YouTube channel. You can see that it's in here. Um, so I'm just showing you that everything works uh, before the upgrade, and then I'll, I'll show you once once we proceed. So one of the things that but that is going to change, like on the configurations, uh, it really depends on how you have it set up. But like in my case, I have on my shared folders, I have all my containers pointing to the configs. Uh, except for like the jellyfin that I have a movies folder, TV show folder, and a music folder. They're under data. So if I go to services and then SMB shares, I'm sharing the data folder. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I can open up the file share on my Windows computer and drag and drop media files like uh, movie files or uh, like it's for instance that video that I, I added. Um, so this is what I'm currently running. Um, before we do the the upgrade we should go to network and do interfaces i'm going to set up a static ip address and the reason i'm doing that is because what i have found is that when you're doing the migration from 6.0 to 6.4 after that restart you end up losing it'll change the ip on you if you have it on dhcp so in this case i'm just going to leave the same one that it has which is the 10.0.0.180 my net mask is the 255 255 255.0 my gateway is 10.0.0.1 and then for dns i'm just going to use the router which is the same thing as the uh, gateway you might have to use 8.8.8.8 .8 or which is a google dns or cloudflare which is 1.1.1.1 um, in my case i'm just going to use my router my router can do the dns uh, resolving so I'm just going to do save and I apply the changes. All right. After doing this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start installing the updates. So I'm, I usually go here to the check mark. You can do the search here by clicking on the magnifying glass. So right now it's showing like this four packages. Right, see how I loaded more packages. So you're going to click the down arrow, confirm, do yes. And then this is going to take a little while while it installs all those packages. Right, so just finish doing the updates. So now will be a good idea to reboot the system prior to attempting to install more updates. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here on the power button and do a reboot. Do the confirm. I'll be right back while it reboots. All right, so it has rebooted. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign back in. And here's going to be the same thing. We're just going to go ahead and click on the, the check mark. Refresh by clicking on the magnifying glass. Here's where we're going to see that some packages that were kept back and we have to connect to SSH and go ahead and manually run a command for that one. Uh, but well, I'll show you after we try installing them. So you do install updates, confirm. Yes. Okay, so here it is that it's telling that some packages were kept back. So in order to get past this one, we're going to have to do it on the SSH. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open up SSH. 
All right, so you're just going to open up your command prompt and then you're going to do SSH. Uh, then you do your username, which mine is root at 10.0.0.180. But in this case, it's be your IP address to your server. So I'm just going to go in there and um, do my password. Now we're going to do an APT get update just so we can reload all the repos, the repositories. And we're going to do an APT get upgrade and we're still going to get those kept back packages uh, just uh, making sure that everything's in there so i had another command uh how to get past this right but i was looking through the form so the commands so you can upgrade is you have to do omb omb and then you do upgrade uh there was another command that i ran initially on my other video and that was the apt dash get space dash dash with dash new dash pkgs space upgrade and that also works but this is the right command i'm going to go ahead and do that instead so it's going to take a little while let's say just finish the updating um so we're going to jump back to the browser and continue from there so now you can see that i'm just going to refresh the page and just make sure you refresh the page so you can get that status message um so you see we're already at 6.4 but that still hasn't applied to changes just gonna go ahead and close this out now if you want to know what change you can just click on this show details and this is everything that's going to get updated so this is the part where if you don't set a static ip address and you click the check mark uh you might lose the ip i mean you don't it's not mandatory to do the static um but if you don't want to be searching through your network to find it I, I would advise to set up a static so i'm just going to click the check mark this is going to take about a minute before everything processes in and then we can start working with the with the docker installation all right so i just finished doing that so now you're going to go to system and then you're going to see that omb extras you have to make sure that the docker repo is checked now in my case it was already checked but if you're doing a new install you have to make sure this is checked and the reason that this is important is because when you go to plugins uh, you have to search for compose and this is the way that you create docker images so this would be the image so just click on that do the install this should be fairly fast all right so it already finished now what that does, it will give you a tab here on services, you get the compose. So right now, if we click on settings, you can see where we have Docker already installed. It's still, it's installed and running. So I didn't have to do anything. It automatically upgraded with it. But as you look at the uh, containers tab, you're gonna see that you don't have them there and you get this error 500 inter server error. Um, also in files, you don't have anything. So in this case, it might change for everyone. Like in my case, like I said, I had been doing my configs on my containers on the config. So I'm just going to select that as being my composed file. Uh, but you can select like part of the forms is to create a composed file. But I'm just going to use this. So I'm going to click save. Now the containers are actually running. So if we were to go to pertainer and we do like a refresh, even though that they're not showing they're actually running so i'm just going to show you real quick so here on my pertainer you can see that jellyfin is running and pertainer and we can go back to this uh, same uh my jellyfin server and you can see that i still it's still up and running mm -hmm. um, so those containers are working now in order to get them um, to show up here on containers you're gonna have to migrate the data the container so i'll show you how to do that in, in so from here we're gonna go to do we have to ssh back into the server we're gonna run some docker commands so here so i still have the the ssh connection active so you're gonna do docker ps and you're gonna see that we're currently running uh jellyfin and portainer so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rename them because whenever we recreate them or before I do that, let's go back to the, the browser. 
before we do that so if you go here to files you can create the file or the compose files for it there's a blank button right here not sure why it's blank but you see how uh, if you highlight over it's auto compose you click on that and here on container you can select the containers that are currently running so i'm going to click jellyfin and then i'm going to do the jellyfin description also i'm going to do the same thing uh, i'm going to create and then i'm going to do the auto compose again and then i'm going to do the portainer i'm going to do portainer portainer create now i'm just going to click save on this now if you were to try to run them right now they're gonna fail because we're currently already running two applications with the same the same container name and also the ports are being used by our old containers so what we're, we're gonna do we're gonna go to the command line we're gonna do the ssh so you're gonna do docker ps and that's how you can verify the names so we're gonna go ahead and do rename so docker rename and then i'm gonna do jellyfin it has to be typed exactly how you see it there if not it won't recognize it so i'm gonna do jellyfin underscore backup this is just renaming the container from jellyfin to jellyfin underscore backup i'm gonna run the same command for portainer and then i'm gonna do portainer underscore backup so now we do the same command docker es we're gonna see that they're running under Jellyfin backup and portainer backup. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do Docker is stop. And then I'm going to type the names Jellyfin underscore backup. And then I'm also going to stop portainer underscore backup. So now that I have stopped those two containers, if we do the Docker PS, there's going to be no containers running. So now we're going to go back to the browser. And if you see on portainer, I'm gonna reload. We don't have anything running because we go ahead, went ahead and, and killed those containers. So now we can start this one. So you can just click the up. This is the check button. Like if, if you compose a file from scratch, you can do the check and I'll tell you there's issues. Since this one's were auto composed, they're not gonna have issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, up so I can bring my container up. Since we auto compose from an existing application this only links all the volume data like to the same place so that's why it doesn't really download anything um, i'm also going to do that for portainer i'm going to click the up now now that we are running them here you can see the up status here under compose files you have the up status if you go to containers you can also see them here also now if we refresh the portainer you're going to see that everything is there uh, you see how the same login containers we have four containers it's just that we created these backups just so we can import them uh, once we make sure that the containers are working like they should you can go ahead and delete the backups so i'm going to go ahead and refresh and you can see that now my jellyfin server is up again you see uh, it's also working so so now i'm going to go back to ssh in, in, so I'm going to show you how to remove them. So if you do Docker PS, you can see that now you have those Portainer and Jellyfin running. But I'm going to go ahead and do Docker, remove, and then I'm going to do Jellyfin underscore backup. I mean, you don't have to delete them, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it so I don't have duplicate containers. And then I'm going to do Docker RM for like remove, Docker RM, and then uh, Portainer underscore backup now if we go back to to portainer you're going to see that now we only have those two showing you see you refresh so now we're running now we're running them here right then now you can just manage them from here you don't have to go to portainer uh also you can look at um containers you can see them right here another thing you have stats like uh, if you want to look at their cpu usage you can just manage them from here uh volumes this would be the volumes that are associated with the containers that you imported um guess what i'm going to cover cover with you briefly is if we go back to uh services compose and then we do files you can go ahead and click edit and basically what's going on here um if, if we we go into like the container name uh the entry point like environment like 
what's important here is the PUID and the PGID. Remember that if you don't know that, like for instance, I'm using like an admin account as admin. So you can just go to SSH and then do ID and then add uh, specify your user and it'll give you the UID and the GID. So this is what this is. Now for this, it's just the time zone parameter. So you can just search like uh, Docker, TZ parameters, and, and you can find them on Google. So another thing is the, the volumes. There's a lot of people get confused here. I mean, at first I was getting confused with this also. So basically I'm covering for, for my anything after the colon, that's what is going to be presented to the operating system. So that's a slash data slash music. This one slash cache, this one slash config, this one slash data movies and data TV. So what you're doing on the left side, you're just telling the system like this is the folder that is going to have access to your container and the container is going to see it as data music. So in this case, you can see a SRV. This is my USB device that I have there. And then this is like the absolute pass. And then I created a, a data folder. That's why I have data. And then in that data folder, I have a music folder. And that repeats like on this one, right? I have this config folder. And then I have the data movies, data TV. So those are the main important things here. Um, that's how the, the Docker composers work. I mean, a lot of things you don't need, but since it wasn't auto compose, that's why it has all this information. The other thing is ports. Sometimes like if you run in uh, MV, it, it also uses port. 8096 you're gonna have to change the ports here but i'll explain that in a later video do you guys have any comments uh, let me know uh, any other video ideas that i should do i know i have been getting some about installing mv or installing plex i mean i, I could go ahead and do that uh, just let me know in the comments i mean leave a like subscribe thank you very much